Well, so, so, all right. So let, I want to move into some sport questions too, because obviously, I mean, we got John Starks here. Yeah. Got to talk some basketball. Yeah, he's a I he's mean. a fellow collegiate basketball player as well. So, so I mean, like, we gotta to... we gotta talk some basketball. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, what was it like to play in the NBA during the '90s? I mean, the era of <laughs> tough defense, physicality. I mean, Pat Riley with his no layup defense. Right, you come in the paint, you're getting. Body, yeah. body. What was it like to play in that era? Because today's era is a little bit different. Yeah, it was fun, <laughs> you know, because that era resembled, you know, when you played on the playgrounds. Mm. And, That's cool. You know, playgrounds is like rough basketball back then. Because, oh yeah. As you know, you couldn't lose a game because if you lose a game, <laughs> you may not get back up. Yeah, you, know, you may not get big. <laughs> might as well pack up, and go home. <laughs> you might as well pack up because you know you got people out there waiting. You know, sure, everybody got games lined up and what have you. And so, unless you was a very good player like I was, I always got, you know, guys wait for me to lose so they could pick me up on the, on the team. <laughs> so, uh, but that's what the, the ninety game was about. It was a physical uh, game. Uh, it was more of inside out now. This is more of a wide open game mm-hmm. compared to the 90s. Everybody had low post players back then. Uh, obviously, we had one of the greatest ever in Patrick Ewing on my team. Most definitely. But majority of guys had big men, seven footers on team. You don't see the seven footers like it was back then. Uh, yeah, they're all shooting threes now. Yeah. yeah and shoot. a little more skinnier. A little skinnier. Back then, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You had like big guys that were big, big. big guys. They were. Yeah. They were Girthy, like, they played two they, trunks. They, 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 yeah. The farthest shot they took was a free throw. That's exactly. Like, right? <laughs> exactly. So the game is totally different, but it, it was fun, you know, playing against some of the greats, you know, the Michael Jordans, the Reggie Millers, uh, the Clyde Drexlers, the Mitch Richmonds. Uh, I can go on and on about the great players, Dominique Wilkins. You had so many, Akeem Olajuwon. You had so many great players back then, and but the game was definitely, you couldn't go down the paint. You know, as a guard, you knew you was going to get hit. The referee knew you was going to get hit. Uh, you know, you get knocked down on your on your tail and you get up. Referee look at you, go to the line, yep. get your free throw. Yep. You know what I mean? It wasn't like going to videotapes and all of that to figure out how hard you get hit. Let somebody just, you know, do something else, you know, crazy or yeah. something like that. Other than that, you pretty much just, you know, played the game hard and, and you competed hard. Uh, I thought – especially back then, it brought out the passion in players. Hmm. You know what I mean? Because it was so physical. You know what I mean? So no matter what team you was playing against, it could be the worst team in the league. They're going to play you hard. Yeah. And they're going to compete. And they're going to play you to the end. And so we didn't take no games off. You know, when teams came into the garden, we knew that they were going to bring their best game. Yeah, for No sure. matter what. Because what that, you know, New York was always the mecca of basketball. Mm. And so guys wanted to perform here. They wanted to play uh, because they know they can get noticed and, and get up in that in that bright light. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and the fans and the knowledge of the fans here was just spectacular. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask you that because, like, playing for the Knicks, you're playing at Madison Square Garden, mm-hmm. the most famous arena on the planet. What was it like to play, you know, major? because most people, some of the teams, they're lucky if they ever get to even play in the Garden, especially yeah. if you're a Western Conference team. Yeah. Yep. But you got to play there almost on a nightly basis. Yeah. I mean, what was it like with the fans? What was it like with that whole atmosphere? It was, it was special, man. Uh, the energy in that arena, uh, especially during that time, because we were, you know, the Knicks was just like the team. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, yeah. The energy in the city and the buzz about us was just incredible. And, Literally, I couldn't walk down the street. You know, I, I remember, you know, trying to go shopping and people got wind yeah. me and people spotted me. And so I had to literally duck inside a shopping store and they had to lock the doors. And I had to literally have uh, police come escort me out. You know what I mean? That's how crazy it was back then. Uh, but the energy in that arena is just so special. Uh, the fans and... And when they got going defense, defense, yeah. defense, it was just like electric in, the, in there. And especially during the big games when we played Chicago, Indiana. Oh, I can imagine. You know, Charlotte when they was very good. 
you know, teams like that, when the West Coast teams come, L.A., Portland, and all that, it was just special. And fans literally would get to the game early for our shoot around. That's how just I, to get a yeah, glimpse. Just to just get a to, glimpse. You know what I mean? And it was just like, you know, nothing that I ever felt like going to other arenas. You know what I mean? New York is just about basketball. You have football, you have hockey, and they all great sports, but basketball was the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they always say that New York is is the the city's basketball. Yep. Yeah. Like down south, football is a big thing, yeah. right? Up north, hockey's a big thing. Uh-huh. But when it comes to New York City, yeah, that's basketball. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, during the '90s, and it's you're top of the top in the NBA, and now hip hop is like top of the game in the '90s. I mean, you, I've heard you mention songs with Biggie. We just found out Tribe Called Quest. Yeah. So, I mean. Which is very interesting. I don't mean to cut you off, but yeah. what's very interesting is that we interviewed somebody uh, a few days ago whose favorite band was Tribe Called Quest. Yeah. Which you never heard of before. And I never heard of it and then found out that they have a song with John Stark's reference. I'm like, wow, isn't that kind of funny? How it? <laughs> so, but, anyway. but my question was, you know, I'm a big Biggie guy. I'm sure you got access before, but, yeah. you know, is, is, the, is the line and I got a story to tell about John Stark or is it about <laughs> someone else? <laughs> Not about me. You're not 6'5". I know that. I'm not 6'5". No, it's not about me. Okay. Cause, Do you know who it's about? No. Cause, you or know, is that a no, I don't? Or yes, I do. I can't tell you. It's probably one of those. It's probably one of those. There you go. Because forever listening to that song, you know, I just played like, oh, that's funny. You know, yeah. New York Knicks. And then as we as we started getting close to coming in, you know, I'm like, man, you know. Could that be? I'm like, no, he's not 6'5". And then I just saw you on ESPN once and Bomani Jones asked yeah. you. And I'm like, all right, I'm not the only one that thinks yeah, this. So thinks I, I just I just yeah. had to no, just put it out no, there. got to ask. You got to ask the question. I mean, <laughs> yeah, come yeah, on, it's man. <laughs> now, have you ever, no, it's not about it. Have you ever met Notorious B.I.G.? I've met. Oh, okay. That big guy rests his soul. Yeah. We got a chance to meet him. Yeah. Were you, were you get, like, getting high fives from Spike Lee on the on the court floor? Like, and any cool interactions with yeah, cool guys? Oh, Spike, Spike the ultimate Knicks fan. Yeah, of course. Spike is just special in that way. You know what I mean? He started, I guess, up top at the the blue seats and he worked his way down. Yeah. And now he's courtside. And uh, Spike is one of those fans that is true blue. All the way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I always tell the story about when he, uh, when we was in game seven, game, excuse me, when we was playing the Indiana Pacers in 94 and we lost game five and we had to go to Indiana in order to bring the game back to New York for game seven. So we had to win game six. And so Spike was obviously getting grief about that. He called us to lose that game, got Reggie going and Reggie. Yep, you know, I remember. Really did. And, uh, but when we ran out that locker room and I looked down at the end of the court and Spike was draped in Knicks color, <laughs> what have you, I'm like, oh, we got this. Yeah. This guy, yeah, like, yeah. He's the only seemed like the only Knicks fan in the arena. He, he probably was. <laughs> yeah, he probably was. You're right. You're right. And we just came out and we played an excellent game and ended up winning game number six to bring it back to the Garden. And it was a wrap. We wow. had to get back to the Garden. But our whole mindset was to get back home. Mm-hmm.